Hi, it's Micah Cowan, and I am here to show you some interesting uh, glitch textual effects uh, that I sort of stumbled across. Um, as you can see, it's a screen full of text currently, uh, and this uh, everything that you'll see here is in text mode. There's no graphic modes being used to achieve these effects, um, but... Uh, as you can see, we've got an interesting effect here, and here, and here, and here. Uh, and so, you may question, well, what is going on, and how am I achieving these? Um, I do actually, on this Apple IIc, I do have a character ROM uh, that allows me to change out the fonts, but I'm not currently doing that. Uh, this is all with the standard Apple II font. Uh, strange as it may seem. So, uh, so what's going on here? Well, I originally wrote this program to help me experiment with putting text on a screen as quickly as possible and toggling it rapidly back and forth for flickering style effects. Uh, and so, uh, what I have is sort of two strings of text. One is the message you can currently see, and then the other one is that same message, but with all letter characters replaced by the letter X. Um, and so, by typing 1 and 2, I'm using the standard output facility to print the text. And you can see, uh, it's pretty quick, but you can definitely watch the screen updating. You can see as the characters cascade downward. Um, now, that's using the standard output. If I type 3 and 4, um, you can see it updates much more quickly. And this is just using direct writes to the screen without using the standard firmware for anything. So this is just raw writing to video memory as fast as conceivably possible. Uh, on a normal standard issue Apple II, or in this case Apple IIc. And that works pretty quick as you can see. Uh, and then finally, um, I have 5 and 6, which don't do any updates to the screen at all, uh, not to video memory anyway, what they do is toggle back and forth between page 1 and page 2 of screen memory, basically just deciding which one is active at a given time. And so, of course, that's the fastest by far, because I'm not having to write to memory, I'm just having to flip a switch, and the entire screen changes with that switch. And um, along with these demonstrations, I created... I created rapid toggles so that it would just toggle back and forth between the two messages, the one with all X's and the one that's regular text, as quickly as possible. So right now you can see it toggling back and forth as quick as it can for um, the standard output hook, which is not super fast. Like, you can definitely see this. If I hit uh, the B key, um, this is using screen writes, and it's going as fast as it can, and this is plenty fast for my purposes. Um, I wrote this program to um, ascertain how feasible it is to use just direct writes instead of page flipping, which I'd been relying on in a text effects engine I'm working on. Uh, but page flipping doesn't work very well on the Apple II GS ROMs before ROM 3, uh, where they made major uh, motherboard updates because the Apple II GS doesn't actually have page flipping for the text pages. It emulates them, and that's problematic. It emulates them by rewriting the screen, and that's problematic for animation purposes. So, uh, yeah, so you can see this is quite fast, and the flickering is um, really almost faster than you can see it with your eye. Uh, not quite, but close, uh, and more than fast enough for my purposes with a text effects animation engine. Um, but yeah, the interesting th thing happens when I type the C key, which rapidly flips back and forth between, 
here. I'll, I'll pick a different refresh rate. So it rapidly toggles back and forth between page one and page two of text. So it's instantaneous and it can happen with just one instruction that takes, I don't know, four or five cycles uh, to switch from one to the other pretty much. And so you can, you can toggle it quite quickly. And in fact, you can toggle it quicker than it takes to send out a composite signal for a single line of text. And that is what's going on. Uh, so if I type the zero key, it, it does it as fast as it can within certain constraints. I've actually slowed it down somewhat specifically to achieve this effect because I achieved it by accident at one point. Uh, and then when I improved the program, it could no longer make this effect. And so I artificially slowed it down again um, at its highest speeds uh, just so that it would achieve this effect. And so what's happening is it's toggling back and forth. Um, oh, oh, there we go. It's toggling back and forth very quickly. Um, so quickly and with a timing such that um, that it's stable, that it that the same corruption occurs in exactly the same spots uh, on every screen refresh, and that's just a matter of um, coincidental timing. Uh, and so it's switching between X and whatever the character is that actually belongs in that spot, um, and it's doing it at the same time relative to the screen refresh, uh, refresh, and so it creates what looks like corrupted characters, and um, and I think it's pretty neat. And if you play with the right arrow key and the left arrow key, then you can adjust the timing um, uh, with a reasonable level of granularity, but not so much granularity that it was easy for me to find uh, where the stability point was here um, because it uses the monitor's weight function and the monitor's weight function is not linear it's um, uh, it, it, it uses basically the square of the number that you feed it to uh, um, to to operate its delay and so very quickly you kind of lose granularity with this particular function but you can make some very interesting effects and I think it could be very handy to use page flipping on those machines that do use it which is everything apart from certain Apple II GS's um, to make some very interesting sort of deliberate corruption effects uh, including some of these animated ones, I think, could look uh, really nice and really wild, uh, especially if they're unexpected. Uh, the downside is that it's not going to work with many uh, emulators. Uh, I've been using AppleWin, and AppleWin perfectly replicates um, what I see on real hardware um, uh, because they paid a lot of attention to exact timing of screen updates and so forth. Um, but a lot of emulators don't go to that level of trouble, particularly uh, I often use um, web-based in-browser emulators, which typically are not going to go to that level of detail of um, sub-cycle accuracy, or even cycle accuracy. Um, it's certainly not for the display. Typically, they'll display, they'll update the entire display all at once, um, rather than up to, uh, updating individual bits of it. But um, but on real hardware and on um, realistic emulators, it can be a lot of fun to play with, uh, and it's neat to think, okay, well, how could I? make use of this in uh, interesting ways. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and that I didn't bore you to death with the explanation, uh, but this is what I've been playing with lately. Oh, uh, and before I go, I meant to give a shout out to Salam Abraham, 
who uh, made uh, played with some very similar stuff in his Hackfest project for Kansas Fest 2020, uh, which uh, placed third, I believe. And um, uh, as soon as I was messing with this stuff, I immediately thought of that program, uh, which he dubbed uh, Mesmerizer Exerciser. And you can find that on the kansasfest.org slash hackfest page. Uh, and I'll provide links below as well. And it does some very similar things with very rapid page flipping and two screens filled with two different characters. And you can toggle what those two characters are and how fast the flipping is happening. And there's some similar effects that you can see from that. Um, but uh, I thought that this was notable mainly because um, you get some very different effects in this one versus that one with... with uh, with Mesmerizer Exerciser, uh, there you can see stripes and such down the, the screen based on what you've chosen to fill the screen with. Uh, but in this case, it's all actual textual characters, and there's a larger variety of them. And so you don't get the kinds of consistent effects that you do with Mesmerizer Exerciser, but at the same time, you get some uh, maybe more exotic text-oriented effects. Um, with this program and so um but i definitely recommend that you try out uh salam abraham's mesmerizer exerciser uh and again the link will be below uh and he also did a video about it so i'll link that as well and um uh it, just like this it runs best on real hardware in particular um but probably there are some detail oriented emulators such as Apple Win that can do a decent job with it. I haven't actually tried uh, his project in Apple Win. Only mine. Have a great day.